I've been organising a couple of the units that form part of the medical degree for about 18 months now and part of that role involves collating student feedback and responses to different styles of lecturing. The things that make a successful lecture are you know, a lecturer who is well planned, who's passionate, who really brings the subject alive. We get really great student feedback for our lecturer Angela Raffle who runs the screening session. My aim is to kind of open the world of screening as a counterintuitive, interesting, complicated and exciting place. I've been teaching probably for 30 years. Well, it begins when you first find out who's going to be on your course and what is it that they're coming wanting. I always greet people and introduce myself. Morning, welcome. To the students, I give them a handout. Yeah, thank you. We'll make sure you all know about it. I think Angela has a particular connection with the students, you know, for example, she stands in the middle of the room until she gets quiet and that really connects her with the students. Good morning everybody. And so if any of the students are wanting to spend a little more time on a certain aspect of the subject, she'll give more time to that area. Yeah. 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 No, I'm happy. I'm a great fan of giving people exercises and I'm a great fan of getting people to talk to their neighbour. So your challenge in the next two minutes is to write down a one sentence plain English explanation of what's the hallmark of screening. She'd set as a task and she'd rather than just then doing her own thing at the front which I think a lot of people do, she came around and checked that everyone was getting on with it or like understood what was being expected of us. I don't think anything lasted for much more than about 10-15 minutes and we were kind of immediately on to the next thing which kind of keeps you stimulated. Angela uses newspaper clippings, she uses research from the field so that really brings the subject to life. So this next exercise is based on that two life example. It's called Exercise ECG. When you come along to a lecture like this, the one we've just had, and the lecturers clearly got experience so they convey in stories and things like that, that really adds to it. What we're doing, because we're medics, it's a lot of diseases. So if they can say, oh, and a few weeks ago I saw such and such a patient, he had such and such, and this is what happened, then you can kind of relate it back to it. And then when you see it in practice, when we go into hospitals, it makes more sense. What I want you to do is actually think about the woman, OK? Yesterday she was walking on the Mendips, full of life and joy. Today she's got her mammogram result. So initially, how does she feel? I think it's a very different way than we perhaps were taught previously as we were growing up. And I think it's really exciting times now to be able to bring that interactivity into the classroom. It can become so mind-numbing as you sit there, desperately scribbling down what they say, but not actually taking in anything they're saying. And then some people will kind of just be teaching something from a syllabus that they've been given, or slides that someone else's slides that they've been given. Um, and that's when I tend to drift off, when I, f I feel like they're not really into it either. I think for those who perhaps, you know, lecture in the old style, I, I always say to them, you know, and invite them to come and see some of the student feedback for those lectures that are, are very much interactive. If the lectures could all meet, and share ideas, I think that would work really well. Life's not a PowerPoint, so doctors in this day and age and before that have always had to think on their feet in the field, and I think it's really important to get students to start practicing that in, in the lecturing environment. Okay, has everybody got through it? Yeah? If you're going to give a lecture, it's got to be like a TED talk. It's got to be something that makes people laugh, um, that makes people think and that inspires people. I think students are paying higher tuition fees these days and therefore they are demanding uh, a more varied learning style um, and that can involve more interactive lectures, e-learning modules, bite-sized chunks, videos. And I think we should be providing a range of learning styles for the money that's paid and give value for money. The most important thing is to remember when you were learning. Remember when you were a student. 
and remember what made you really glad to have turned up to a teaching session. Uh, yeah, I thought Dr Raffles was fantastic. Um, she was one, up in the kind of lectures that I'll remember, I think, at the end of the year. She was just really engaging, really enthusiastic, and it felt like Dr Raffles actually wanted to be here and wanted us to learn, not just give the lecture. You have to remember what it was like when you didn't understand things, and you have to actually be strongly interested in making sure they have a good experience. Thank you all very much indeed.